Hello all, welcome to the channel DevOps Tech Stack. Today I'm going to start the day 16 video of the cell scripting playlist. So in this particular video, you will learn all about the curl request. So basically what I want to show over here in this video is that like whenever you are trying to access any particular software or you want to download any particular software from any URL to onto your particular server. So in that case, your server should be able to access that particular URL in order to download that particular software. So all those kind of requests you can check using the curl command. Okay, now basically what is the curl? Curl makes a get request to the target URL. You will give any particular URL which you want to access from your server and it will check whether you your server is able to request to that particular URL and check if whether the server is able to access the URL following the HTTP request. By default, it will follow the HTTP URL and it will make a HTTP request. With the curl command, you have few of the flags available like in which I will discuss few of this in particular video like the first one is the hyphen s which is the silent request means maybe if in case you have used the wget command to download any software from a public url then in that case you will might be seeing one progress bar about the status of downloading that particular software but in case you don't want to show that particular progress bar in your terminal then you can use the hyphen s flag then the next one is the hyphen W. What it does, it is actually used to display the information on terminal. Whenever you are trying to use the curl command or any other command you are trying to access from your terminal, you want to show all the output in your terminal. So in that case, you have the hyphen W flag which is used to display the information on the terminal. Next is the HTTP underscore code. It is actually the variable which is used to get the HTTP code. Like if you are trying to make a HTTP GET request on any particular URL, if your server is able to access that URL, in then in that case, it will return you the success code as 200. Your server is not able to access that particular URL, then it will give you a some random ID and that will not be the 200. Okay, so this is the overall purpose of the curl request. How we are going to use in our shell scripting code is, I will show you. This is basically a short and simple code. What I am doing over here, the very first line is the CBang line. This you might be already knowing because we have already made the 15 videos of the shell scripting. The next is the URL variable. What value I am passing over here? For now, I have made this URL variable as the static. But if you want to make it as a dynamic, then you can pass this URL value from the command line argument also for that also we have one separate video you can check that out but currently i have made it static in the url what i am passing i am just passing one git url this is my url actually which is publicly accessible so it should be accessible from my server also okay so i am trying to see whether this particular url is accessible from my linux server or not you can have any another url also the next one is the response variable in this what i am storing the value i am trying to make a curl request to this particular url because i am using dollar url over here this will give me the value of this one okay now what we are doing curl request then hyphen s is for the silent we don't want to show the progress bar then the next is the hyphen w it will show all the information in your terminal whenever you will run the code the next is the http code variable what we are trying to mention over here that we want to see the http code status also like if it is whether it is 200 for the success one or for the failure one it is some random id or not that also we want to see that's why we are getting the http underscore code variable over here the next is the http1 underscore code variable. What I am doing over here, whenever you will run this particular command, you will get a http request code at the last of this particular output. But you just want to see the code value. So whatever the response, whatever here I am getting the entire thing, out of that I just want the last line because in the last line you will have the code value. So how to get the last line of the entire list of uh, lines? For that you have the tail command and tail and then the you have to mention one over here with the hyphen n. One means first line from the last we want to get it 
That's why tail hyphen n then one. The last line we want to get from this response value. So we have this particular command for that purpose. And then the value what we are passing over here from this dollar response means from this particular variable value we want to just see the last line because in the last line we will get the HTTP code value. If the, then we are printing the HTTP code value. And after that, if that particular HTTP code is equal to 200, means the request from this server to that URL is success. Okay. So in that case, request is working fine. In case our server is not able to reach this particular URL, then you can send a Slack message that request is denied. Like that kind of configuration you can do. For now, I have just kept a dummy URL because I just want to show you how it works in the real time. Maybe in some case you want to download any software from any URL, then you can put that software URL over here and you can check whether that URL is accessible from this server or not or might be the situation that uh, your server URL has been changed and you want to see that now we are able to access or not. So all those kind of checkers you can apply in this particular code. So it is very important and this scenario is very important to know as a DevOps engineer because you need to do it on a regular basis. You need to put some kind of conditions. So before executing this particular code, what I will do, first I will run this particular command, okay. We will copy, paste it over here. At last, we will put the URL value, this one. I will show you what is the output. As you can see, you are getting all those informations in your terminal because you are passing the hyphen W flag. And at last of the line, you are seeing this 200 HTTP code value. So in our code, what we are doing that we just want to see the last line in the last line, what we are getting the HTTP code value that is 200. So we are just parsing this particular command and using the tail hyphen N1, we are getting the last line that is 200. And then we are comparing it over here and we are printing request is working fine because our request is completely fine. So we will get the HTTP code value as 200 and we are printing request is working fine. Okay, now let's run this particular script. And you will see that the request is 200 because we were printing in, in the code and the last request is working fine. Okay, now let's see, I am trying to change this particular URL value. Now this URL will not be accessible because I have modified it. Save it. Now again run this particular script and you can see that now we are getting the HTTP code as 404. This is not equal to 200. So in the else condition and in else condition, you will see that send slack message that request is denied. Okay. So those kind of configurations you can do using the shell scripting code. Basically, in real time, what happens? There are multiple uh, software which you are downloading from any URL. Maybe in some case, what happened that the URL had been changed and your server is not able to access that particular URL. So your entire system will get down. You will not be able to download that particular software. So in that case to happen, you need to have a Slack alert to your Slack messages so that you can or you or any of your team member can check that message and see what exactly is the issue. So that kind of shell scripting you can do in the real time. I hope now you are clear with this particular concept based on the curl request and how it is useful in the real time. Thank you all for watching our videos. Please do like, share and subscribe for more such videos.